Okay, it says that it's doing the thing. Okay, very good. All right, so thank you for coming, everyone, today. Um, so our plan for today is um, we're going to do our normal um, look at uh, recent act bugs, um, like we always do. Then um, Bill Erickson is here. He's going to um, revisit the conference presentation um, that he did about the well. People are coming in about the um, the re new receiving interface, the advanced receiving um, interface. Sorry. <laughs> and um, so he's going to show us around that. Um, he's going to, we're going to ask him any questions uh, that we can think of, hopefully. And then I just have the results of that interest survey that I was going to show you guys. And then if we have any time left, just whatever everybody wants to talk about. So, um, okay. So we will go ahead and get started so that Bill has enough time to talk. Um, so, uh, for our acquisitions books. So things that have been added since we last got together, um, we've got one, two, three, five. So the first one is, uh, there we go, is just a, um, a placeholder in that I am working on um, angularizing the patron requests for acquisitions. Um, and I am trying, sorry, People are coming in. I am trying really, really hard to have something done that we can throw up onto a server for Feedback Fest. Um, I mean, I could throw it up onto a server right now, like the interface does work, um, but it's still got like some missing pieces and stuff that I'd like to put in. So, um, but anyway, so this is a placeholder for that and just FYI that hopefully we'll have something to look at by Feedback Fest in a couple weeks. So that's that one. And then there is, um, there is this one, which is basically about reports. So when you make reports now, you can start from the acquisitions uh, like side of it uh, if you're looking for copy information. But that just means that you can find things that started in ACK. Well, what if I want to see all copies and then also tell me if they started from Mac. You can't really do that right now because the linkages just aren't there. So this is basically like a request to have um, those linkages created so that we can start from like items and get back to acquisitions instead of having to start the other way. So that's reports, if that made any sense. Then we have, um, and obviously stop me if anybody wants to talk about any of these. As always, you guys know I go on. All right, so then um, then there's the ability to apply fund tags to multiple funds at once. So like right now we have it where you know you can just like go into a fund and then add this tag, that tag, that tag, that tag. Well, what if I wanna like add the tag of adult to you know 10 funds at once? Well, you can't really do that right now. So um, I can see some more uses for fund tags if we could have that kind of style of applying them, like applying them uh, all at once. So there's that one. Tiffany. Then, yes. Uh, sorry, it's Jennifer. A fun tag related question. Yes. Do fun tags uh, propagate with funds? Do you know? I think they do. I think they do, but I'm not sure. Okay. I, I will test because if not, I feel like that's something that would also make it uh, easier to use them if you don't have to reapply the fun tags every year. That's a good point. That would be really nice because, I mean, we're putting everything else forward, so why not? Yeah. We don't use them as far as I'm aware yet, so I don't know what they actually do <laughs> currently. <laughs> I don't think they do anything. Like, my pie in the sky when I was thinking about this was, like, um, if you could tag um like several of them that are sort of right now like unrelated with all like adult and then you could view like on a pie chart you know almost like a visualization mm -hmm. thing like all of the adult funds this is how much is spent or something like that yeah. so we're gonna like just grouping. run reports for different librarians possibly so you yeah know, like fund reports for the person who does the adult purchasing versus a fund report for somebody who does the children's section. Yeah, that's a great idea too. I like I like that. 
So um, yeah, if you if you find out that they don't propagate, that would be a great bug report. I think that'd be good. I'll test and report if it doesn't work. Thank you. <laughs> um, okay, let's see. Oh, this one. So this one I think was Andrea. Yes. Um, this is just that right now, you know, for our warning and our stop percentages, it's just in a color. And this is really small and obviously you guys can't see it. There we go. That's slightly better. Um, so just having color by itself is an accessibility issue, like Andrea says. And then there's a performance issue with doing it that way. So as she says, to wave your hands vaguely, do better. Um, so this is just a bug to start that conversation. So if anybody has any ideas of how we could show those, you know, in our drop downs, other than just the color, that would be something we could either talk about or add to the bug, because I think that would be great. Um, I don't really know, but there's definitely an idea out there. Um, let's see what else we got. And then this last one, I think is Jennifer. And oh, it's uh, it looks weird. The fun, fun details page looks weird when you have different size screens, I believe, as it changed the size of your screen. So um, I think things get squished together. So those are the brand new ones. Then newly updated, there's two really good ones in here, um, IMO. So this first one, this prints tiny text. Um, and I don't know if this was 3.6 or 3.7. I don't know, whenever, whenever search um, came in, if you did the print selected invoices, it used the new print service, which is great, but it made everything teeny, teeny, tiny. And so really we haven't been able to use um, printing invoices from the new search screens. We've had to use the legacy search screens because otherwise you just couldn't read it. Um, so Galen actually did a fix for a different bug down here that he thinks will fix this issue and it's already in master. It's been committed to master. Um, I haven't had a chance to test if this actually fix, fixes our issue over here. Um, but if nothing else, then that's a feedback best thing that we could test. So hopefully this is fixed already in master. So we'll see, fingers crossed. And then last one, well not last one, but the big one <laughs> is that uh, Sprint 4 is line items and purchase orders is not out, but it's available for testing. Galen emailed, um, I think all the listservs with um, testing information and they have a server that's got that patch loaded up. Um, so <clears throat> if you haven't had a chance, where is it? His, his, here it is. Um, so they've got this awesome, like whole document that with all the instructions and everything in here, here's the, the, uh, the server they've got. So if you haven't had a chance to come look at this, even if it's just to spy and see what it looks like, I would definitely encourage encourage that. We're hoping it will get into 310. That would be awesome. Uh, so um, if it's not already in master by Feedback Fest, we, that will definitely be one um, to put in there. Now, having said that, having said all that, Christine, I think, nope, nope, this is that, this is not that. Christine, I think, found a regression. Here it is. Um, <clears throat> Christine Morgan found a regression that in the new work that you can't, uh, I believe, batch apply a fund when the purchase order is already on order, which we can definitely do in JoJo, and we definitely in Pines, we do that. So, um, so hopefully, you know, that that gets fixed and we it can get committed. So, but um, but even with that, if you find anything else, then please add it to this bug or just go poke around and see what you see. So, this is um. This is a big one for us, so so that's good. Tiffany, uh, yes, ma'am. Right, the regression would we consider that a blocker for um, getting into three hundred and ten? Because I mean, if you can't update the fund in the staff client after activation, I can see that you know causing significant issues for libraries. Yeah. Um, I don't know. So 
I would wonder how difficult it is to fix that. Uh, if it's just like right now, it's like, you know, you can't use this if it's on order. Well, okay, we could just change that little piece of the code and be like, no, we'll take that out. Like how difficult it would be to, okay. to fix this issue. Um, Cause I don't know, I'm just greedy. I want it in there, but I also don't want it to break things. Um, since also the Dojo interfaces will still be available. Right, cause they can go, people can go back into the Dojo to make the batch update and then back into Angular. Yeah, exactly. Um, and maybe there's a way we can indicate that this is a blocker for removing the legacy interfaces. That's true. Yeah. Um, I know this also introduces a library setting for um, whether or not to show links to the old interfaces or not. So they'll still, I don't think they're taken out for a while. I don't know. But yes, I think that's a comment we could make. I would just hate for the it to go forward and then uh, you know a couple versions later dojo to be removed um, and we've forgotten that this piece requires dojo yeah 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 um, darn it I have what I was gonna say and I lost it um, I mean I well since since dojo would still be available I personally wouldn't consider it a blocker but i would just like you said consider it a blocker to removing dojo but not to committing sprint for altogether if that makes sense i don't know if i'm alone on that one i agree with that i just wonder how we uh how, how the best way to indicate that is so that um it doesn't get lost down the versions <laughs> All right, let's let's write something here. <laughs> uh, let's see. Um, we don't consider this particular regression. Somebody tell me if this needs to be written better. Um, a blocker for spent for into three ten, but maybe two. Everybody can watch me write. Uh, consider it a blocker for removing the PO line item dojo interfaces. How's that? That's something? OK. All right. There we go. OK, cool. Yay, work. Um, OK, did anybody else have anything about Sprint 4? All right, cool. OK, so in the last one, I put it in here just because there was activity on it. I don't totally understand what's going on with this EDI file transfer it needs to be smarter but um, basically I put it in here because Jason Stevenson did like a little like patch thing because of all the stuff that was going on with BNT it was basically like I think we were checking their servers a ton and they're not responding so I mean I asked Chris if he would put this on pines for us and he did and it hasn't broken anything but I don't know if it helps anything or not either so <laughs> Um, but basically, I put it on here for visibility. So if you guys are interested, you can ask your sysadmin if this is appropriate for use for y'all to use or not. But so I just put it in here so everybody knows it exists. Hi, this is Carol from CW Mars. Hi, Carol. We added that because we have I don't know 160 B and T funds. So each fund was uh, timing out after two minutes. So the EDI was going for about four hours plus trying to get that. So that's why he, you know, cut back the time out so that it didn't basically break EDI for other vendors as well. That's really useful then. And yeah, now that four hours, that's horrible. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, there we go. So, and if it hasn't broken, CD or Mars, it has a broken pines. So there we go. Um, okay, so let's see what do I got left. And then just the last one is like super small. It's just that um, in claiming and administration, claim types, we just shuffled the tab order. Like we just scooted claim types to the fourth one. So, and this is now been committed for 310. So I think it's been committed. Yes, committed. So that's in 310. So it just moves the tabs around. So it's a little one. 
All right. Does anybody have anything about any of these bugs or anything else that we want to talk about before I turn it over to Bill? Hi, uh, this is Samantha from NC Cardinal. Hey. Um, I have, we've been doing some uh, training recently and a couple questions have come up in those trainings. Could I ask those now or would you rather me hold them to the end? Um, I definitely want to know, but why don't we put it after Bill's presentation and then we'll have time, then we'll okay, have that. more stretch of time to talk about them. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Awesome. Yeah, thank you for asking. Okay. All right. Then I'm going to stop sharing my screen, possibly. Um, stop presenting. Okay. And then, Bill, I am going to um, turn it over to you. Okay. And while you're doing that, I realize I should probably introduce Bill. Like, I think that's what moderators do. I'm sorry, I'm bad at this. Um, <laughs> so uh, Bill Erickson uh, works for King County Library System in Seattle, Seattle area. And um, so he did this presentation earlier this year. So he's gonna show it to us again. And yes, hopefully that was okay, Bill. <laughs> yes, thank you. Um... Interestingly, when I choose the share option or the present now option, um, it says uh, Chrome will share the contents of your screen and then the share option is disabled. I can only click cancel. That's interesting. Oh, I've never seen that before. Hmm. Settings. Oh, wait. I... Nope. I'm. Sorry, my fault. Oh, okay. It was I was like, I don't know how to fix that. <laughs> yeah, it, it it showed one screen. It was waiting on me to to click the screen I wanted to share, but there's only one screen, so I just assumed it would click it. Um, oh, okay. okay. All right. Do you see? I do. Okay, great. I'll go ahead and put my camera on too, just so you can see who I am. <laughs> um, there we go. Um, okay, yeah, thanks Thanks for inviting me to, uh, to come and talk. Uh, yeah, to, to call this as a presentation, maybe overselling it a little bit. Um, the, uh, one, of, one of the good things about the, the advanced shipment stuff and acquisitions is that it's really simple. Um, it seems a little exotic at first because EDI is always kind of, um, you know, makes my brain hurt, but um, and what it's actually doing is really, really pretty simple. So. Um, I'm happy to walk through that and take any questions. Feel free to talk up at any point because I'm not I'm not watching the chat or anything. So feel free to interrupt me. Um, first, I just wanted to mention that I did a I did a, a presentation at the last conference, and I just wanted to mention that those slides are up here. The slides are not super duper amazing, but um, they are there on the uh, conference page, you can get to the slides. And so there's just a PDF of them. So that goes into a little more detail on some of the who's and what's and why's and wherefores. But I'll just do a quick sort of technical or a sort of user interface uh, overview today. And here's the Launchpad ticket where this is running right now. So it's pending merge. Um, the uh, So just to recap what it is, um, we place orders through vendors, send the orders uh, via EDI electronically to the vendors. And then, uh, you know, currently in, in, in Evergreen, uh, in the main branch right now, it already supports the ability to read um, order responses. So these would be the vendor sending back an EDI message saying, we have this many of these items that you order, these are on back order, stuff like that. And of course we can process electronic invoices as too. So this just adds one more type of message that we can pull from the vendor. Um, called the uh, advanced shipment notification. And um, all the message does is it says, okay, you ordered this stuff. Um, we just sent out a shipment with X number of containers in it. And this is what is in each container, the titles that are in each container, the number of copies for each title in the container. And then it's going to say what the barcode is on the outside of the container so that you can wand that with a scanner. The um, 
Uh, so the good thing about this is you can turn this on and you can pull, you can start pulling down these messages based on the orders you've created. And if you don't do anything with it, it doesn't do anything automatically. So it doesn't go into Evergreen and change anything. It just shows up essentially as a report that you can run an action on. So if you actually go in and then start wanding barcodes, you can do further actions on that. So I'll kind of walk through that now. Um, but that's this makes this one of the easier EDI deployments to do because it's read only until you actively go and interact with the data that's being delivered. So, um, oh, and one other thing, we um, I was going to do this demo on our testing cluster, uh, but we don't have access to it right now. And it had tons of um, ASN data that I could do whatever I want to with. So I'm going to do the demo on our production site, but I'm not, so I'm going to do dry run receiving instead of proper receiving. So that'll change the flow of the demo just a little bit, but I'll kind of point out where I'm doing that because I don't want to, I don't want to actually receive the items yet. So we have um, in the ACK menu, there's two new entries here. There's uh, receive shipment and invoice ASN lookup. The second one is something I just added, and it's not available yet on Launchpad because we just started testing it. Uh, but I'll, I'll look at it anyway, and it will be on Launchpad later. But the main one is the uh, receive shipment. So if I go in here, pulls up a barcode scanning interface. We have our set to receive on scan by default. I'm going to uncheck that since, again, this is our production site. And you would, uh, I have some barcodes pulled off to the side here. The idea is you would receive a, you know, a crate of items uh, or a box of items. And then within that might be multiple individual boxes. And then each of those boxes would have a barcode on the outside um, that you could scan with just a regular barcode scanner, same as, a, you know, scanning a copy barcode. And then it would go into this interface. And um, when you scan it, the barcode will send the enter, and then it'll go ahead and cause that to scan. So um, this is uh, an active order from Baker and Taylor. They have sent us a shipment notification for three different line items. Um, and you'll know that it's a it's a mult it's a mix of different purchase orders. So it doesn't it's not just per purchase order or anything like that. It's just whatever they happen to put in into the shipment at the time. So it's showing us uh, the data from the ASN message. These are the three line items impacted. And then it's going to show me here that um, this shipment has seven copies of this one, five of this, and then six copies of this one. And I can see that I have, in fact, ordered eight copies of the first record, eight copies of the second, and six of the third. So the um, that just kind of helps to indicate that what's in the shipment may not be the entire line item. It could just be a part of one, depending on how they have things packed. And just so I know that what I'm looking at here makes a lot of sense, I can see how many I ordered, how many I've already marked as received, and in this case, none of them have been marked as received yet, and then if any have been canceled or delayed or anything like that. So you get a, a kind of a quick snapshot of the individual um, summaries of the, of the copies on the line item. From here, you can pull up the purchase order inter interface as a whole. You can go to the individual line item copies page or the PO interface focused on the title. Um, I'll just go ahead and pull up the line item directly. And uh, this might look a little different because we are using the Angular ACK interfaces in production. So um, that's what this is pointing to right now is going to be the Angularize. But that's that's not part of what I'm talking about today. It just happens to be that we're using new interfaces. So I didn't want you to be surprised at the way this might look. Um, so you can go in here and just kind of eyeball, double check. Yes, we have these eight items on order. We're expecting them to be coming in soon. That makes sense with the uh, delivery information that we've received here. So um, the next step would be to receive the items, uh, because presumably you got this barcode off of the box that the items came in, so you are ready to go through the receiving process. So um, the interface has a dry run option, which I'm going to use again on production. I don't want to actually mark them as received. But um, so you can do a dry run. It'll it'll give you a report of everything that's going to happen when you do the actual receive. So if I click that, it's going to run through the receiving process. Um, and then I get my summary here. The ASN said there were seven items. I was able to mark seven as received, five and five, six and six. So there were no errors or unexpected values in this case. 
if the received count doesn't match the notified count, then it will be sort of a you know a bright bold red kind of a thing over here. So you can go back and, and investigate further. And then you can jump from the line items from this summary interface as well. But um, since I did do this as a dry run, the uh, I did not mark the items as received. If you did it without a dry run, they would mark them as received. So you can still see it's sort of pending at this point. If um, if we if I wanted to show you, I could show you one that has already been processed, just so you can see what that looks like. So this one was processed. Go ahead. Question: Doesn't it also um, mark them automatically from on order to in process? Uh, yes, it uses the Perfect. same. It'll it uses the same code on the back end that does the receiving as if you had done it by hand, essentially. So whatever the next copy status is that you normally use, it'll go to that. Um, so here's an example of one that's already been processed uh, on the 13th. And um, so a number of, and, and, and again, just this shipment had two items in it, but we've already received five. Probably there were other ASN messages that related to this purchase order. Um, but uh, if I just pull one of these up, it's going to look the same way as if you, would, like I said, as if you had received it by hand. So it's going to show the items. It's going to have the unreceive operation. And the rest is going to be what you would expect to see there. And if it's already been processed and you submit it here, it's not going to do anything. It's not going to try to receive it twice or anything like that. What does the the pending receive column mean? Like I understand received, but what does pending receive mean? Um, it means it, in this particular case, we have it, it essentially means on order items that haven't been received. So probably the, this oh. column would make more sense if it just said on order. Oh, OK. OK. Yeah. If we go back to a different one, then that pending receive value will show what we've ordered and not yet received. So yeah, ordered 12, pending 12, ordered 18, pending 18. So this may be like too technical because it's been a while since I've actually handled like shipments. So let's say that like B&T sends you three boxes. Do all three of those boxes have the same number on them or do, does each box have a different number? Um, in my experience, the boxes have different numbers. So okay. they ours, I guess they arrive kind of as a collection of boxes in some super box or the pallet or something i'm not entirely sure uh, but each individual box does have a little sticker on it with its own barcode okay the in um my, okay. go ahead i was going to say in my previous experience with a different ils when we use this um with baker and taylor each box had a unique asn tracking barcode okay that matches what yep. i see yep so the, it's unique to each box so that covers just exactly what's in that box OK, cool. So it should replicate what's on the packing slip then, is that correct? Exactly. That's my experience with um, a previous ILS that we used this for years with. OK, cool. So one last thing I'll just show that I this is the interface that I just added but have not um, posted to the community code yet is this um, invoice lookup. And um, we we found an early testing that sometimes someone would pull up the invoice expecting the items to be received and they weren't. And there was often a question of, well, did we receive the ASN or not? And if we did, why isn't it received? So that's why I added this interface. Um, but in the uh, invoice identifier, the vendor identifier for the invoice. And um, it'll list all the ASN messages that have been received that have a link to the invoice so they're related to a line item at least one line item on the invoice so this is an example of where a single invoice has you know covers uh quite a few boxes of items um, and then you can jump to the individual line items from there or um the person who processed it in this case 
Um, so, like I said earlier, this if you if you have the the EDI the ASM activated with your vendor, and um, you want to just see the data, you can you can do that. You can come in here, you can review everything, and then if you don't want to use actually use the receiving just to sort of get started, then you can review the data here and then jump off to the individual line items and continue the manual receiving process. So there, there are ways to integrate this um, so that you're not going kind of whole hog at first. Um, you can just use it as a report, or then you can eventually actually start doing the batch receiving. The batch receiving has been working really well for us. Um, at first, uh, one of the things we noticed was um, you, uh, if you if you scan a barcode and pro tell it to process, and then don't give it time to finish drawing the page, then sometimes it would fail. So that's something we've kind of had to train on. Um, so and there there's probably something we could do to make that a little bit smarter too. But that was just one of the things that was causing a little confusion early on. Uh, but by and large, it's it's worked really well. The data we've been getting has been high quality and, and matches the orders and, and all of that. So there hasn't been much confusion around that. Um, right now, we're live with Baker and Taylor. We're almost live with Ingram. Uh, we just have to tweak one thing on the message format. Um, and uh, there's another vendor we're talking to that does not currently have any plans to implement ASN in the in the EDI format that we support. So I don't know if that's going to go anywhere. But if it does, I'll let everybody know. Uh, but I think that pretty much covers it. So did you have to do any um, tweaking of the EDI with BNT, or, uh, or were they pretty much sorted? Well, they were the first, so they were essentially the reference. Um, so the initial code to support ASN came from their sample messages. Oh, OK, cool. Yep. And then um, the stuff we're getting from Ingram is 95% like the same. We just got to tweak one thing, as it always goes. There's always one little thing. And so this, these are not messages that they're sending and we're just not processing. This is something that we have to contact them and say, hey, we would like to start getting ASN. That's right. OK. Yep. You just tell them uh, to turn it on, however they, you know, if they want to do a test thing or, or just put it in production. Again, the beauty, you can throw it in production. and It doesn't really hurt anything. Um, make sure if it was a different kind of message. Yeah, yeah, it should be fine. Um, but yeah, you tell them to turn it on for you, all of your accounts or whichever accounts it, it makes sense to turn it on for. And uh, with when the patches for this are applied, then it will just start working as soon as the data is there. And I haven't looked at the launch pad in a while. Do you have this like pull requested, like ready to go in, or does it still need tweaking? It is pull requested. OK, because it's so hard to test EDI stuff. Yeah. So I'm kind of just like, if it doesn't you know, break anything, um, maybe we can throw it on one of our Pine servers or something. So OK, cool. Oh, uh, it looks like I need to add a release note. OK. I'll take care of that. Uh, but the code is is pull requested. The code is essentially pull requested. It's ready to go. So yeah. So it could be added to um, an evergreen version right now, or is it pending in an upcoming version? Uh, it may or may not make it into the next release of evergreen. Okay. Hopefully, we'll get it into 3.10. We'll see. OK. Thank you so much for developing this and working on this. For those of us who've used it in previous ILSs, this is wonderful to see in Evergreen. So thank you. <laughs> Great. Yeah, I'm, I'm, we're really glad it's, it can be useful. Um, it's something we've had on a, a, a to-do list here since, I mean, for years, quite a few years. All right. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. I do have another question. Um, will there be or the ability to see um, pending ASN, like what they you're expecting to receive? Through the mail, yeah, um, meaning ASN messages that have already arrived, but you have not yet um, received the boxes. 
Yes. I, yeah, let me be clear. I'm sorry about that. And our yeah. previous ILS with the whole ASN um, enhancement and abilities, you could actually see what containers were on their way. So you need to be, so I didn't know if there would be a way to look up. Um, we could pull up like that vendor and look and see what was shipped by them. There is, um, this is the not easy way, but it's just a way that I know that works. Okay. Um, and you can filter by vendor, uh, but it's just going to give you a full list of all the, all the ASN that's happened so far. Okay. Um, and there isn't, <laughs> there isn't a link in here, so I would need to add a link for that. Here, let me put it in chat just so um, I can remember that it, it exists. And, um, but yeah, so you can see the raw data, but ideally we would have something a little more tuned to searching by a specific vendor or something like that, or just, you know, limiting to unreceived or, or, or what have you, but the data is there. Another question. Mm -hmm. If um, we're in a consortium environment, can it be turned on for specific systems within that consortium that want to use it? Um, I think that would be a question for the vendor. Um, so what, whatever files they put on the FTP server, we're going to download and process. So they, uh, I think the vendor would have to be, you know, you'd have to coordinate with them as far as which accounts to create ASN messages for. OK, thanks. Mm -hmm. Okay. In that um, in that interface you were just in the shipment notification, the receive date is just the date we received the message from EDI. Is that right? That's right. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, it is confusing because there's two different kinds of receiving going on here. The uh, process date is the date that the staff actually went in and scanned the barcode and did the receiving. Copy level uh -huh. receiving. Oh, okay. Because you know, like in EDI messages, there's also like a in like regular EDI messages, there's also like processed on. So I wasn't expecting that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, the the EDI it's the um, what we're looking at here is not the raw EDI message. It's the EDI message translated into a shipment notification. So there's a new database table in Evergreen that has the shipment notification information. It just pulls out the stuff we care about. Um, the uh, the EDI itself will be in a separate table. So that would have the process date and all that on it. But this one, the process date is referring to which, when the staff manually processed it. So the raw ASN messages would be just in the normal ACK EDI message table. Yep. Gotcha. All right, anything else? All right, I'm going to hand it back over then. Okay, thank you, Bill. That was awesome. Great. That was really cool. I kind of uh, like at first I was a little, I was a little scared um, of the interface because, you know, having the packing slips and like having your hands on the items. I was a little worried about like accountability, but I mean, it seems like you would still have the accountability. You're just scanning it in just so it collects them faster, it seems like, so, or that collects the items faster. Yeah, exactly. It's still, there is still a, an acquisition staff login that is marked as the person who did the receiving. Yeah, cool, okay. Yeah. Um, okay, so any last questions for Bill? Um, I know Samantha had a couple questions, so if nobody has anything for Bill, then I'm going to call on Samantha. <laughs> okay, all right, Samantha, what have you got for us? 
if you are still here. I can't see the list of everyone. I can see you, but I can't hear you if you're talking. Sorry about that. Um, I'm, I had to step outside my house right now and the uh, traffic sounds are really terrible. Um, so can you hear me now? I can. Are, are you okay to talk now or do you want me to like come back to you? Can you come back to me? I, I'm yes, only can. outside for like five <laughs> minutes and it's just be a lot easier inside my house. I'm sorry. No, that's totally fine. Okay. All right. Well then let me do the, the interest survey and then um, I'll check back in with you. Okay, sorry about that. Yeah, no worries. Okay, um, all right, let me share my screen real quick. Again, somewhere. Let's see. Is it here? Oh, it is here. Okay, all right, let's see how much bigger I can make this. Um, yeah, that's, that's okay, I guess. All right, so, um, so these are the results from the interest survey that we sent out a couple weeks ago. Um, we got 10 responses. So this is the results. Um, let's see if you can see over to the side. Overwhelmingly, uh, people were like, yes, definitely record them. So we are. Um, so I will start posting those um, on the wiki um, once the, the meeting is over and the, the uh, file processes and everything. So I'll post those over there along with the meeting links. Um, so as far as what people were interested in seeing, it was overwhelmingly about reports. Um, there was um, two basic options for reports. It was like acquisitions reports for cleanup and maintenance and then just more reports. So I combined those. Um, and once those are combined, that was 30% of all people said they were interested in reports. Um, and after that, it sort of goes down um, like EDI and fiscal year end came up next and then more EDI, like reading messages and stuff, um, and then spreadsheets stuff. Um, if you are actually interested in this um, spreadsheet tips and tricks thing with reports um, at this month's uh, reports interest group, which is at the end of the month, um, and I cannot remember the day to save my life, but um, I am actually going to be doing a presentation about like Excel uh, formulas and tricks and um, things like that that you can use with reports. So if you are actually interested in this one, um, you may want to, to come to the next reports interest group because that's already organized. Um, so, so this is just RIG. Oh, thank you. Uh, it is um, the 28th at uh, 11 Pacific, which is two, <laughs> is that two Eastern? <laughs> that sounds right. Um, so there we go. That that will be the, the next um, reports interest group where I'll be talking about Excel stuff. So, um, so that was just, are you interested in any of these things? And then it just sort of broke it out, like what's your top interest? Um, and that was, again, reports and stuff. So um, basically it was like reports and then more reports. And then we start, then we start getting into like mark upload errors and fiscal year end and stuff like that. So, um, but based on these answers, um, we have several um, people that are gonna come and talk to us either about reports or fiscal year end or new interfaces. So we have some some stuff lined up for like the next several months. Um, so I appreciate everyone who answered. It's really helpful. Uh, it's kind of daunting to try and figure out things that everybody is interested in for every month. So I appreciate everyone who answered. Um, and if you have any other ideas, I am definitely always open to it. So um, to hearing them. So does anybody have any questions about the survey or anything they want to say or whatever? Okay. All right. Hopefully I've given Samantha enough time. So if you can hear me, hopefully I've stalled enough. 
Um, all right, I'm going to do my best. I'm, I'm sorry. I, my husband couldn't do school pickup today and I got, I got stuck with it last minute. Um, so that is why I am outside where it's very noisy. Um, that, that's totally but, cool. I can't hear anything but you. Okay. Oh, that's great. That's what I was worried about is that the, the sounds of all the buses going by would be too noisy. All right. Um, so we have been doing some training with acquisitions. And as we've been doing this training, kind of coming across some questions that we're just not sure how to answer. Um, one of the first ones that we had was about blanket invoices and sort of what those even are and uh, what are the circumstances in which you'd use them? I, um, I, yeah, go ahead, Bill. <laughs> I, I was say I could help a little bit with that one. Um, the uh, blanket invoices are the invoices that are linked to blanket orders. So um, we use those locally where it's just a a pot of money for an unknown collection of items. And as the items come in, um, they are processed and as, as part of this blanket invoice. And then once that blanket order is completed, the blanket invoice is, is finalized. I don't know if that was a very good answer to your question, but it's essentially a blanket order with unknown individual items that come in over a period of time. Is there like kind of a specific... I don't know. Um, like, can you give me a specific example of how that's used? Um, like, is it for like junior library guilds sort of things or? That's actually what I was going to say. Our, our library, some of our libraries use, um, well, not a ton of them use blanket orders, um, TBH, to be honest. Mm -hmm. um, but um, you could. So like, that's exactly what they would use it for. So like, uh, junior library guild, you know, you pay them a thousand dollars or whatever. So you just encumber a thousand dollars on the blanket purchase order. And then as you get invoices, you just eat away at that thousand dollars and they're attached to that purchase order. So does that, does that make sense? Yeah, that, that totally makes sense. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so another question we had is that we have a couple libraries in our system that have funding sources that have different fiscal years. And just kind of curious how you can deal with that in the acquisitions module. Um, if you basically have one fund that ends December 31st and another one that ends, say, June 30th. And that may not even be a, an, an option. That's a really good question. I don't think I've heard of that before. Um, there is a field in the funding source, um, and I'm just trying to pull it up so I can actually uh, say the right field. Um, uh, but there is a, and I don't know if this field does anything currently, um, but uh, in the funding sources, and sorry, I'm looking at a server that I currently have no acquisitions permissions for. So let me try a different one here. Um, when you are allocating money, um, there is a, a deadline date. So when you allocate credit to a funding source, you have an effective date and a deadline date. So the deadline date is when the money in that funding source should be spent by. Um, but I don't know that the deadline date does anything other than just display informationally. Where do you see those dates? So in a funding source, if you click on apply credits, you see those fields. Um, and on the funding source pop-up where you've got the credits and the allocation tabs, it shows the effective date and the deadline date as columns. Um, I am looking at uh, 3.9 servers, which so it has the uh, angularized administration. Okay, because I can see when I look at the credits, I can see those columns, but I don't see a way to 
to do anything with those columns. Like I don't see a way to add that date. Yeah, so I'm not sure if the deadline date, uh, the option to actually put it in there might have actually come with uh, the angularization. It may be because we're in 3.7. Uh, I'm just opening up the legacy interface here. Uh, so I don't know that it really helps you, Samantha, but it looks like the functionality is kind of beginning to be in there. So, you know, maybe maybe it's a start. Um, uh, sorry, go ahead. Somebody else was going to... Are you... Um, are you... Blah. Samantha, <laughs> are you um, are you worried about running the different fiscal years on like a day to day basis of like which funds are available to select or more like administratively like, you know, like um, uh, I lost my train of thought, um, you know, moving money from your funding sources into your funds like administrative stuff. Uh, more administrative. I think the question actually arose when talking about like end of year stuff. Okay, gotcha. I just wanted to make sure I was understanding. Was that Deborah that brought that up in our meeting, Samantha? Because I believe she may be on the call. No, it I think might it have was been Sharon. Deborah, and I did see was it her Sharon, in there. Deborah? Okay, it was. It, it was. must have been Sharon. Okay. I think she has different pots of money, and some of those pots of money run on a calendar basis, and some of them run on a fiscal year, July 1 to June 30th, and she was trying to figure out how to handle it, even for rollovers, I believe, wasn't it? Yeah, I think so. I was looking back at our notes. That was her dilemma. It might have been Sharon. Yeah. Yeah, I think rollovers was a big part of it. It definitely sounds like something that would be good to put a launch pad bug in for, you know, describe what it is you're trying to achieve, because I don't think Evergreen can currently handle quite what you need. Yeah, I'm looking at our notes here. The question especially had to do with the end of year propagation. And something that we were talking about doing was like, edit the funds that you're wanting to close out for propagation and uncheck the ones that you're not trying to propagate and then go back and do it again type of thing. Uh, and I've just looked at our 3.7 server, and those dates that I can see in Angular are 100% not present in Dojo. Thank you. <laughs> I think those were the two big questions. Uh, Deborah or Wananga, do you have anything else that you think came out of that meeting? No, I think those were the two big ones that came out that people had questions over. Yeah, I think so. Well, thank you for, for the answers and the potential future answers. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for asking. And sorry to like put you on the spot when you're at the bus stop. I have been there. So sorry about that. <laughs> it's okay. Thanks. Um, okay. Did anybody else have anything for our last like five minutes? Just a quick question for those who use Baker and Taylor. Are you finally starting to see EDI invoices loaded again? Um, we are. We got some yesterday, but I had to basically nudge them because um, I had a couple of my libraries that didn't have theirs yet. So I actually had to send them like, I'm missing this. And then they had, they reposted them for us. Yeah. That's my fear is that we had lots of stuff come in and then all of a sudden they had the ransomware problem for weeks. And I'm just wondering if they will correctly pick back up where they left off and um, load the EDI invoices that were missing, you know. Just circling back to blanket orders, your question, Samantha, I just put a link in the chat because um, we have documentation that goes from 
the beginning to the end of the blanket order process. Oh, that's fantastic. Thank you. Um, and I think all the screenshots should still be accurate. Um, Cause that's all still dojo. Thanks, I'll, I'll definitely dig into those. And let me know if you have any questions. Okay, last call. Anybody else? Okay, hearing none, we can call it quits four minutes early. Yay. All right. Well, thank you so much for everyone for coming today. Uh, Bill had to sign off a little early. So um, in, in his absence, thank you, Bill. <laughs> um, and uh, our next meeting is, let's see, I can tell you real quick. Our next meeting um, is the 12th of October um, and Jennifer Pringle is going to lead that meeting for us. So. And we're going to be looking at reports Yay! as the number one requested topic. <laughs> awesome. All right. Thank you, everyone. Everyone have a great day. Thanks, Tiffany. Thank you. Thank you both.